1984, we wanted to discuss with you in the context, obviously, of uh, what's coming up this weekend. You've described it as the best moment of your career. It was, it was a standout night. I mean, it, it had everything. It, yeah, it certainly did. You know, we were stoned before we got into the uh, uh, stadium. <laughs> All the players. Wow. And the bus driver and the... <laughs> and the and, I'm, we're, and presume we're talking about being pelted by stone. Correct. Yes. Uh, no, none of the other <laughs> I stuff. I could have gone either way. So that set the precedent of the game. And, right. and we took it as right. And the Roma were favourites on the night. Yeah, we, we, we were going into the lion's den. Mm. It was like, uh, you know those gladiators that go into the Colosseum? Yeah. They've got a, they're hiding to nothing. And, mm. and, uh, and if they do win... They either get the thumbs up or the thumbs down. So we went in there and uh, we have managed to come away with a, a victory. And Liverpool had had such an impressive record in European finals up to that point. Played three, won three. Does that in some ways increase the pressure or does it take it off a little bit? Or Does that feed into the night at all? Well, because of what happened when we initially went into the stadium, that really fired us up. Did it? And then in the tunnel when we were coming out, with the, you know, coming onto the field, the Roma people never never came out of their dressing room, so we started to sing, singing a song, you know, with with for Chris Rea. Chris Rea song. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is, but I love it, and so we were all warming up to this. And uh, as soon as they came out of the dressing room, soon they said, "Carry on singing and just look them in the eye." So you can imagine these Italians when they came out, there and we were saying, "I don't know what it is, but I love it." Damn, I don't know what it is, but I love. It. <laughs> they must have thought, "Hey, I, <laughs> these these boys are." They're crazy. They're not crazy. <laughs> yeah. they, they must have, like, they must be really scared then when it gets down to a penalty shootout because they're like, look how relaxed those people were before the game. Well, I, I don't know if that uh, had anything to do with it, but when when we came down to the shootout, we looked over to the Roma side and they were all lying on their floor on the floor with their masseuse on their legs and you know rubbing, and all all of us were standing around having a chat and mm. and. With Joe Fagan telling us, you know, uh, what to do and, and how to do it. But it never worked out well how Joe Fagan wanted it. Because Stevie Nichol got it's into the... the first penalty. Well, he, he took the ball because uh, uh, Phil Neal was tying his bootlaces. Right. So he ran into the box and Phil, uh, Phil Neal said, excuse me, it should be me. And he just took a puff of his cigarette. Uh, let's run with it. And that was it. Wow. And he put the ball over the bar. And I go past him, I said, thanks for that. And he told me, you know, fly away and do your own job. Yeah. But it wasn't fly away, you know. Because yeah. I mean? so, the commentator in the, in the, in the clip, when, you're, uh, when he's walking back, it goes, oh, and Bruce Grabler's walking towards Steve Nichol now, you know, and the assumption is there's going to be some words of encouragement here, but like, you, don't, you don't hear what's said. I, 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 I you just, just said, slide past said, each other. Thanks for that. And he said, fly away and do your own job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Joe Fagan has a word with you as well at that well, point. Well, Joe Fagan had his arm around me, and I couldn't, you know, I didn't have to look up. I could smell the cigarettes. Right. And he just said, "Listen, myself and the coaches, and uh, the chairman, and the directors, and you know, the captain and the team." And I'm thinking, "Where is he going with this?" And he said, "And and the wives and the girlfriends, and the ten thousand fans that came. I'm not, not going to blame you." Right. Sorry. Oh, jeez, what is he talking about blaming for? Yeah. Mm. If he can't uh, stop a ball from 12 yards. Mm. And I went, oh, okay, thanks. I said, thanks for that. And he says, but try and put them off. All right. And I only put off the two players that I thought might have the bottle to to actually, you know, okay, I'll see how, how this goes against an international. Mm. So the first one was Bruno Conti. And I put my hands on my knees and crossed them over with my hands in a 60s dance. Mm. And he shot the ball over the bar and I thought, oh yeah, might work. And then Graziani putting his arm around the referee, which I didn't like, and ran into the back of the net, bit the net, went to the other side, bit the net. He crossed himself and I came in like, a, like I did. You watch you ever watch it back? I watch it back, yeah, but, and I, you know, I can still do exactly the same move, but because... <laughs> It was one of those things, in the, in the letter of the law, I couldn't move my feet until the ball was kicked. Mm. So both times I never, my feet were firmly on the ground and I just did that. And then this way I was, you know, sp spaghetti legs, feet was planted and he just... Skied it. Skied it over the top of the, well, he clipped the bar and went over. Do you think you were directly responsible for the two lads missing? I, I, I certainly got into their brain. That's that's into their head, 
they they couldn't hit the hit the target. They were worrying about me too much. So I, I certainly got them, you know, in, into their heads for mm. sure. Have you spoken to Graziani since then? Well, Graziani asked me to on the semi-final, um, semi-final to go to Rome, and because I'd already been, I already seen the game at uh, Liverpool, and which we we thumped them. So he asked a, a, a reporter, "Tell Bruce Grobler I'd like to emulate, do the penalty shootout." So we beat the um, Roma in Rome. And we hammered them in Rome. So on the second leg, when it, which is back at uh, Anfield, he asked me to go over to Rome because he wants to take a penalty, you know, re redo that penalty because now I, I think I can score. <laughs> so I said to him, "No, well, you've got two days. You write to Liverpool Football Club, and I came to you last time, so you must come to me this time, and we'll do it at half time on the pitch when we play Rome wow. at, at Anfield." And he declined, so bad luck. The mind game's... Uh, the mind game's still... If he doesn't... He didn't want to travel to Liverpool to do it in the middle of the... In, in the at half-time. Liverpool and UEFA would have agreed for sure. Mm. But because he didn't come, he lost the opportunity. Th that initial invitation suggests that Graziani still thinks about this quite a bit and yes. still thinks you are responsible for him missing that penalty. Correct, and he's going to miss again. <laughs> <laughs> was he doing it as part of a TV stunt or was this just... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. He asked me and I, and I said, I'm not coming over there when the game is going to be played in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. You come to Liverpool and we'll do it at half time. Never heard anything more. more so. uh, we should set that up. Only when Liverpool play Roma. Right. In Liverpool. <laughs> So if there's a next time, who knows? You know what to who do. Knows? Yeah, we'll be on it. You'll be on it. 